Hello everyone and welcome back to the last match of the quarterfinals of the Speed Chess Championship. It is Wesley Sol versus Maxim Vachel Lagrave and uh, uh, this match was much much closer than the one between Magnus and Fabi. And uh, what's uh, what's interesting is that the winner of this match will face uh, Magnus Carlsen in the semifinals of the Speed Chess Championship. And uh, this is one game I chose from the 5 plus 1 section if you have any of your favorites from maybe the, the 3 plus 1 or maybe even the bullet if it's a nice game uh, I will consider it. Uh, do use hashtag suggestion and I will go over it. Um, just give me a second. I can see the board is a little... Uh, the board is not where it should be. Uh, so just give me one second. There we go. Yeah, for some reason, for some reason, sometimes the interface just shifts uh, and I don't pick up on it and then it lasts like for a few videos. But then I see someone in the comments mentioning it and then uh, I, I realize what's happening. Uh, but OK, let's check it out. Features a very nice Sicilian defense. And whenever we have a, a MVL uh, wielding the black pieces, then, you know, it's going to be a great Sicilian. Uh, win or lose. So Wesley with the white pieces opens with e4. We have c5, MVL goes for the Sicilian defense, knight to f3, d6, and pawn to d4. We have uh, C captures on d4, uh, capturing um, the pawn, knight captures knight to f6 and knight to c3. And as usual, MVL goes for the knight of Sicilian, pawn to a6, which you can uh, attack many, many different ways. Uh, pretty much any move in this position is a good move for white and uh, Wesley goes for bishop to e3. It's the uh, English attack or the Byron attack and we haven't had that uh, in um, uh, quite some time. So let's uh, check it out. e5 and d6 are the top moves here. Uh, e5 being the most played one just dislodging this knight but uh maxim goes for the uh well for the uh, maybe nicest idea when it comes to blitz chess and that is knight to g4 you start harassing the bishop and then you're gonna further harass it with h6 g5 and very natural moves uh, come to mind for black so bishop to g5 of course you don't want to allow knight captures on e3 h6 bishop to h4 g5 and now bishop to g3 we have bishop to g7 uh, putting pressure on the knight here and just queen to d2 preparing to castle queen side knight to b3 uh, sorry knight to c6 first attack the knight knight to b3 this is all uh, top uh, top theory and now knight g to e5 now this knight is beautifully placed on this central square we have h4 uh, g4 and now queenside castles by wesley and there are some games where b5 was played but here maxim goes for bishop to e6 and it is now as of move 13 that we have a completely new game so Maxim probably knows uh, all, all of this as this is uh, uh, his territory. B5, uh, like I said, has been played before. Bishop to E6 is a, is a new move. And even though uh, the engine says B5 is uh, the, the top engine move, uh, Enville probably thinks that Wesley knows this as well. So he tries the, the second best move. Maybe it will confuse Wesley a little bit. And okay, knight to D5. This is a standard square for this knight in, in the Sicilian. Rook to C8 and now king to B1. Uh, will be very useful to get the king off of this diagonal and uh, if the black queen ever finds her way to a5 you also want the a2 pawn to be defended so here pawn to b5 mvl starts his expansion on the queen side and pawn to c not c4 pawn to c3 pawn to c4 would be a terrible move uh, now it, it uh, defends against this knight also the bishop is not as strong and now uh, it's it, it, it's a it's a good move um, all, all in all. So knight to c4, attacking the queen, uh, putting pressure on the b2 pawn, and saying, okay, if you want to keep the queen on the board, or rather not not trade bishop for the knight, you have to move the queen somewhere, either to c1 or to c2 or maybe e1. Uh, but Wesley decided, as this is a five plus one blitz, it's better to get rid of this knight, as in blitz or or you know pretty much always but in blitz knights are very tricky bastards so bishop captures on c4 b captures and now knight to c1 rook to b8 and now you can already see all the pressure that um, uh, maxim's bishop and rook are putting off to that white uh, queen side uh, f4 by wesley and now uh, we have g captures on f3 and this is one of those uh, moments before wesley plays f4 uh, he thinks, uh, and uh, whenever you have a position like this, you, you're always thinking to yourself, if, if you're playing with the black pieces here, you're, you're thinking, if white plays g4, I'm just going to capture f cap, uh, g captures on f4 en passant, 
and that's exactly what the player with the white pieces is thinking and that's exactly what happened here f uh, f4 and uh, g captures an f4 al passant uh, but wesley missed or rather maxime missed um, a very nice winning idea here and that is queen to a5 without touching the pawns uh, because there's uh, not all that much you can play now because bishop captures on c3 is a huge threat you will not be able to uh, to pick it up uh, of course you, you will first eliminate the knight remove one of the defenders of the c3 pawn so let's say knight to e2 adding a defender to the c3 pawn but it doesn't matter now we will play pawn to f5 and now of course if captures then uh, the, the bishop will be able to capture with um, uh, with the, uh, the delivering a check and of course if knight to e3 just adding uh, another defender uh, then you will castle and your position will be spectacular here uh, but okay, not uh, easy to pick up in a 5 plus 1 uh, game. So G captures on F3 by Maxim. G captures on F3 and now Queen to A5. But now it's a little bit different uh, because now Knight to A2 can uh, nicely be played. Now Pawn to F5 doesn't really do anything as the Pawn is on F3. It's not on F4. So here Knight to E5. Uh, and here Wesley says, all right, let's get rid of that knight. Bishop captures, bishop captures, and pawn to f4 now. Uh, instead of this pawn to f4, I will mention knight to e3 because it's... Um very nice uh, move for white point is that after black plays something uh it's easy to see that black is very quickly without any moves you will play rook to g1 doesn't matter if you trade or, or if you go back captures captures let's say king f8 stopping rook to g8 now f4 and okay bishop g7 king to a1 uh black's position is just terrible uh, you will never break through here. Uh, the knight nicely guards the, the c3 pawn. You have all of this uh, expansion. And the rook here and the queen here aren't really doing all that much. And the bishop blocked by his own c4 pawn uh, is terrible. So this would uh, objectively be completely winning for white. But again, it's very, very hard to pick up on such things in a, in a blitz game. So in the immediate f4 by Wesley. We have bishop captures on d5, e captures on d5. And now bishop back to f6. Queen to c2 and now rook to g8, uh, grabbing that semi-open g file. King to a1, getting rid of uh, the king for, from the b file, and now king to d7, uh, developing the king, sort of connecting rooks, and now comes knight to d4. Uh, here, the the way to play this is maybe queen to f5 check, and then after the king moves, now you centralize and you uh hold you just hold and uh, the, nothing bad can happen to you however wesley played knight to d4 here and uh, he probably didn't uh, blunder the the d5 pawn he probably wanted to sacrifice it for activity uh but it doesn't really work out uh, in his favor queen captures on d5 was played by maxime rook h to e1 and now comes rook to b6 and this is the move that um, uh, wesley probably didn't take into consideration uh, his idea was that if rook to g2 attacking the white queen as the black queen defends the rook uh, uh he he had queen to a4 check in mind and then everything is perfectly fine for example if king to c7 you can even play knight to e6 check and you pick up the black queen okay uh, black is not lost or anything black will gain some material for for the queen but it's okay queen f5 check this pawn is hanging this pawn is hanging the rook is nicely placed on the e file um it's a it's a fine position uh but uh maxim played uh rook to b6 instead and now he's uh, he he gains more control over that c6 square that wesley will try to take advantage of uh so wesley plays knight to f5 here and this move completely blunders the game for wesley so feel free to pause the video now and try to calculate why this is so while i give you a couple of seconds it's quite a quite a nice maneuver So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, spotting that it's the move that we already tried. Only in this position, it now works. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Rook to G2. Uh, this is what uh, Maxime played, and it was in this position on move 29 uh, that Wesley so resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. It's uh, The problem behind the Rook to G2 is that now uh, the Queen cannot... Uh, just do nothing and defend against the rook plus the b2 pawn will be under attack plus the queen has to remain on this diagonal to defend the knight so knight to f5 uh that's basically the blunder and i will just show you a couple of um uh, really fun lines okay what happens if we trade queens rook captures rook captures on c2 uh how do you play this the the b2 pawn is hanging if you play rook to b1 then it's just a very nice checkmate rook b captures on b2 check 
Rook captures Rook to C1 check, only move Rook to B1, and now Bishop captures on C3 will be checkmate. So after this Rook captures on C2, you can't really play Rook to B1. You have to play something, but what? If you play Knight to D4, uh it's it's uh, it's one possibility but still just rook c captures on b2 and this will now be a problem to give you uh maybe a nice line rook to c1 you want to defend on c3 e6 attacks the rook and after the rook moves now you just pick up the knight and create a pass pawn you're gonna push it to c3 white cannot capture because of checkmate on b1 and whatever you play doesn't really matter you're gonna play c2 and now there is no defense against uh, uh, rook to b1 check this will be checkmate or you can play rook to b3 defend mate this way but then okay we just capture rook captures a captures and now rook to b1 check you can even go into a king and pawn end game and this is now completely winning for black if you if you're new to chess uh, a pawn up in a mostly a every situation uh in, in a king and pawn end game will win you the game there are of course positions where it will not uh but more often than not it it will so that's one of the reasons if you after rook to g2 you just go for for a nice queen trade uh instead of this you could go for well there it's it's very hard to, to 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 find a reasonable move you could block maybe rook to e2 that's a possibility but then you just trade rook captures and now the queen can no longer defend the knight um or or if you go rook captures on d5 uh then just rook captures on c2 you are now up a full rook or if you capture the rook here then just queen captures on f5 you are now uh, again up a, up a full bishop so whatever you do uh, doesn't really uh, doesn't really work the only thing you could do is maybe play knight captures on e7 uh but after bishop captures uh, i mean okay you, you you gave up a piece and now you're gonna try something but still what do you want to play queen to b1 and it's uh it, it, it's a silly position rook to d2 it, it, it's pointless to play being down a piece of course you guys know this but just in case anyone is interested uh, so yeah, after Rook to G2, Wesley doesn't want to uh, look at this game any anymore, and of course uh, it was in this position that he resigned the game. And what happened in the uh, during the entire match? Well, here are the uh, results of every time uh, time control. In the five plus one, Maxime Vachelagrav won with a result of six to three. Then Wesley won the three plus one section with a result of uh, five to four. So he bounced back a little bit. He was down by only two points. And during uh, the bullets, uh, the bullet section, he even equalized. At some point, he was down four points. Then he equalized. The result was 10-10. Uh, but in the end, uh, Maxime uh, got a winning streak and he, he he won like four games in a row. And in the end, the result was 16 and a half to 12 um, uh, and a half. So sort of equalish but uh, in the end Maxime was better especially in that 5 plus 1 uh, format that was um, uh, th 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 there he was just much better also in bullet but Wesley won the 3 plus 1 section and what does this mean uh, like we said the winner the prize for winning this match is uh, playing against Magnus Carlsen in the semi-finals of the speed chess championship uh, this is uh, sorry this is what's happening so you have uh, uh, Nakamura will face Nihal Sarin in the semi-final and now we know that Magnus Carlsen will face Maxim Vashiel Agrav uh, and then we'll see uh, we'll see who will meet um, uh, in the in the finals of the speed chess championship of course everyone is rooting for 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 Magnus and Hikaru but Nihal uh, really just crushed everyone he played so we'll see if if he will be able to uh, do something against Hikaru uh, you know, it, it's going to be a great match. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it and a little bit of uh, extra info on the side. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Timothy Rosan, Chris Robert Picard, Sapan Batia, uh, Sarah Hamilton, and Jonathan Hira uh, Hirschi for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.